Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're gonna to be continuing our series on limits. I have a couple past videos right here if you wanna look at. Otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and dive into the squeeze theorem and how that applies to limits. So let's go ahead and dive into it. I have the definition or the theorem written out here. So we're gonna take functions f of x, g of x, and h of x such that f of x is less than or equal to g of x, which is less than or equal to a of h of x. So g of x is bounded below and it's bounded above. So this is gonna be for all values of x near a, but except possibly at a. So really close to a, it could be bounded, but right at a, it could do something else. Doesn't really matter because we're using limits. So this is how it goes. If the limit as x approaches a, there's supposed to be a little a right there, of f of x is equal to some value l that's also equal to the limit as x approaches a of h of x, then that means the middle term g of x, the limit as x approaches a, is also going to equal this value of l. So what does this mean really? Let's go ahead and look at a picture. Let's say we have f of x doing something like this. I'm just making up a function right here. So I'm gonna label this f of x, and let's say we have another function above it, and we're gonna call that one h of x like this. And then in the middle, we have our g of x function doing something weird like this, getting closer and closer. Here we have a function like this. So we have f of x is less than or equal to g of x, which is less than or equal to h of x. We have that it's bounded. And so as the limit, as x approaches some value, that limit of g of x is going to be between the limit of f of x and h of x. So it's like we're squeezing that function together. So let's go ahead and look into, at an example. We have f of x equals sine of x, which is this red function right here, on the interval negative pi over two to pi over two. And we're gonna go ahead and evaluate the limit as x approaches zero of sine of x. So we have that right here. So looking down here, we have that the negative absolute value of x is less than or equal to sine of x, which is less than or equal to the positive absolute value of x. So we can see right here that our function is bounded by these two. So let's go ahead and evaluate both sides of the limit. Let's take the limit as x approaches zero of negative absolute value of x. If I were to just use direct substitution, I would get negative absolute value zero, which is just equal to zero. Now we can go ahead and evaluate the limit as x approaches zero of the absolute value of x. Again, I'll just use direct substitution and I get a value of zero. So if we were to apply the squeeze theorem, it looks something like this. Applying the limits I already know, I know this left one is zero and I know this right one is zero. Which forces this limit to be equal to zero. And that's how the squeeze theorem can be applied. Let's go ahead and look at some common inequalities that we can use for the squeeze theorem. First, we have that sine and cosine of theta, whatever that angle is, is bounded by negative one and positive one. And that's because if we were to look at the graphs, here I'm gonna go ahead and draw sine of theta first, which is something like this. We have that it's always bounded above by a value of one and it's also bounded below by a value of negative one. The same thing applies to cosine of theta, but I know the period is just different like this. Same thing if I go to the other side. Cosine is also bounded by negative one and positive one. So let's go ahead and evaluate this next limit. We have the limit as x approaches zero of x squared times sine of one over x. I included the graph right here so we can see what's happening and we can take an educated guess that this limit is going to equal zero. But let's go ahead and do the math for that. And I'm gonna also use this common inequality that we have here. So I know sine of one over x, but remember in our function, we have x squared times sine of one over x. So I'm gonna multiply every part of the inequality by x squared. When I do that, I get negative one times x squared is negative x squared, which is less than or equal to x squared times sine of one over x, which is less than or equal to x squared. 
So I also provided a photo of this. We have x squared on top and we have negative x squared right here. And then this crazy function in here is our x squared sine of 1 over x. So now that we have our function bounded, let's go ahead and apply the squeeze theorem. I'm going to take the limit as x approaches 0 of our left inequality, which is negative x squared. Using direct substitution, I just plug that in, so I get negative 0 squared, which is equal to 0. I'm going to do the same thing for our right bound, which is just x squared. So I'll take the limit. So now we can see the left bound and the right bound both approach zero. So let's go ahead and write this all out. I know my left limit and I know my right limit. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in. And this forces the limit to equal zero. If it's bounded above by zero and bounded below by zero, then it has to equal zero. Let's go ahead and view another example of this. Here we have the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared e to the sine of 1 over x. So I provided a picture right here. Here's our bounds. We have our upper bound and red is our lower bound. Sorry for those who are colorblind. I drew arrows. And we are going to go ahead and figure out what these bounds are. So I'm going to go ahead and use my inequality again. I know sine is bounded by negative 1 and positive 1. So I have sine of 1 over x less than or equal to 1. Now I'm just going to raise everything to E. Now I'm missing one more element, that x squared. So I'm just going to go ahead and multiply every part of the inequality by x squared. So now I can see my upper and lower bounds. Up here I have x squared times E. Down here I have x squared times E to the negative 1. So let's go ahead and evaluate both sides of that limit. So now I can see the left and the right side go to zero. So let me go ahead and write out the whole thing. So now I'm gonna fill in what I know about both sides of the limit since they both go to zero. So again, this forces our limit to be zero because if it's bounded by zero on the left and right side, it's gonna equal zero. So that's how the squeeze theorem can be used to evaluate limits. We're not quite at limits with infinity, so make sure to stay tuned for that and we'll reapply the squeeze theorem with infinity. So thank you for watching. If you liked, please leave a thumbs up and leave comments on videos you'd like to see or problems you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.